Hey guys, I want to briefly talk about the importance of developing workflows as a developer, as a coder. Whether you're doing web design and web development, whether you're doing AI, whether you're doing uh, mobile development, doesn't matter. So what is a workflow? It's literally a flow of work. It's a methodology, it's a standardized way in which you approach writing code or building projects. This video is sponsored by Bug Herd. This is an app that can be easily installed on your web page, either through browser plugin or JavaScript insert right at the top of your page. And Bug Herd essentially will overlay a user interface so that you can have users point out, literally point and click and leave notes behind about what they want changed in a particular web page. This is great if you're a freelancer or and you want your clients to be able to check out the site and give you feedback without having to go back and forth with emails and screenshots. It's super convenient. And it's also great if you're working with a team and you just want to point out what needs to be done as a team leader. This would be very useful for me. And I actually installed it on one of my demo sites to check all of this out. And it's pretty cool. So let's take a look at the demo. All right, so I signed up to Bug Herd and we're going to set up the first site. There it is. Create your first task. Time to update this photo. Uh, create task. Very good. So let's jump into Bug Herd, who is later. Ah, uh, here we go. The Bug Herd task is here. Uh, we can set a date due. Not bad. So that's a, a very basic introduction, which you can do with Bug Herd. I can see this as being an invaluable tool as a freelancer where you have your client go into the site and change things, well, uh, add comments rather, and even working with a small team or a big team of developers, you can have the lead developer point out things that have to be changed in terms of UI and so forth. Everybody's gonna have a slightly different way of doing things, that's for sure, especially you know in the AI space versus the mobile space versus the web space, but it's very important that you start working on workflows. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips in this video on how to do that. So workflows can be defined, can be developed at a few different levels. First is in terms of the tool set level, what IDEs you use, integrated development environments or coding tools that you use, uh, what uh, app servers you use, depending on the type of development that you're doing, um, and just basic best coding practices, how you write your code, how you structure your code. So for example, the code that you actually write, uh, regardless of the language, should have a certain particular style or structure. A consistent naming convention, for example, which is a very basic way to start optimizing the way you work. But it starts creating a workflow. So for example, in my naming convention, I go from the specific to the general all the time. Right, so I go from the specific to the general. So I go, so if I was, let's say I had variables for people's identities, for their names, I would go uh, name first, uh, excuse me, I go from the general to the specific. So I go name first, name last, name middle. Why would I have a, a standardized naming uh, convention for my variable names, for my object names, my function names, etc., Because it's easy, it makes it easier for me to debug the code, it makes it easier for me to write the code, it makes it easier for me to organize the code, and it makes it easier for the next person, right? So let's say you, you have a naming convention where you start with the general to the specific, like name first, so general's name, and the first is, uh, is the specific, as opposed to going first name, last name, it's just in terms of searching. So when you're using your IDE and you're, maybe you're debugging or looking at some variables, if you, it's something to do with the name, uh, an object name. So you, have, you create an ob a person object in the case of object-oriented programming. So you would type in name and then the IDE, the integrated development environment, would be able to go name and it would show you first, the last, the middle, initial, whatever. It just creates a flow. Again, a very simple, trivial example, but to give you an idea, something is simple as a naming convention can help speed up the workflow and reduce errors. Another example of developing workflows is the tool sets that you use. So for example, um, the code rehub, the, the rehub, the code hub that you use or the code repo, there we go, the code repo that you use. Now, I think the majority of people use GitHub now, but 
that is a process. Like, you know, how you properly structure your code, how do you check it in, how do you check it out, uh, uh, what does a contributing developer do, do they have their own branch, blah, 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 blah. These are all things that you can work on. Now, depending on how big your group is, group is, you might have different protocols. So if you're 10 people, you would have a stricter, a stricter more fine-grained protocol with regards to your code management. If you're only a single developer, you still should probably use you know, GitHub or something similar, uh, simply because you have advantages there with back, backups and restores, et cetera, et cetera. Again, this is something you're going to work out as you become more advanced as a developer, just the way you manage the, the development of the code base using a tool, a third-party tool, like a, a GitHub. Now, if we're talking about software development, we're always talking about interfacing, unless you're solo, a solo person doing your own code for your own project. But if you're coding, chances are you're going to be working with a client or other developers or maybe the designer. So again, part of the workflow that you can develop is just a communication protocol amongst people, you know, so that uh, it's standardized in terms of what they expect and what you expect back from them, so that there's no guessing, you know, there's no guessing about uh, did, they, did they review this revision? What do they expect back from you in terms of uh, change requests, et cetera? How many change requests will you expect? Especially if you're a solo guy, or solo developer, um, having uh, strictly defined parameters in terms of uh, revisions and change requests, et cetera, and how it's processed and how it's acknowledged, this should be built in right from the beginning, right from the inception of the project, so that you have no uh, no disputes, less or less disputes. You know, that's a very important thing which you got to do uh, as a developer. Again, so that's part of the workflow. So workflow can be right in the code, it could be in the tools that you use and how you use those tools, like a Git or like the, or a particular ID. You may say to your team, well, we're all going to use, uh, I don't know, whatever, VS Code, or we're all going to use uh, PyCharm if you're writing Python code, etc. Standardization, workflows, avoids headaches. And you also have workflows in terms of uh, the project management and the communication style with uh, the stakeholders, as they say. Stakeholders is just a jargonistic term. There we go, jargonistic term that describes anybody who's involved in the project, who has a stake in it, who has might have a say in it. So, for example, if you're uh, on a team and you're working and you have a manager who's managing a project, uh, he he or she might be the major stakeholder, but they're going to obviously set up, they should have set up uh, lines and processes of communication. But if you're on your own as a freelancer and you're dealing with clients or maybe you're subcontracting part of your work to other developers so you can get the job done, uh, again, you're going to have to develop workflows. Once you've done that, communication workflows, humanistic, human workflows, if you will, uh, once you've done that, you've established all these different workflows, your productivity as a developer is just going to shoot up quite a bit. And you're going to see it's, it's so much easier to get things done. It's like with this camera here. So I got this new place, I got a new camera, I installed new lights, and I'm still working out my workflows with regards to that. In the sense, where am I going to set the camera up, what type of lights I'm going to use, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once you establish your workflows, as a developer in any field, then your, producti your productivity shoots up, your profitability shoots up, the amount of errors you make drops, uh, the amount of frustration you have drops quite a bit. It's something you have to work on, something you will develop. This is kind of like an intermediate level thing you could do. Uh, I talk about workflows and I teach some basic stuff in my freelance course. Not a plug, but just to say it's there for you. And uh, so there you go. I hope this is useful.